Hey there again everyone, which is Hazel again, and I wanted to quickly review with you how things are going after my first month of experimenting with this Miguel Ruiz notebook. So I will kind of turn the camera around and show you what I've got done for the month of March, which is actually not much, and how I'm making updates and plans for the month of April. So, let's take a look. Okay, hello there everyone. So, this is the first time I'm attempting this with my new tripod. It's a little bit of an awkward angle, but hopefully it works out. So here is what I had for this experiment. I was using my mom's old 2009 Spelladay Almanac for inspiration, and I was using this Miguel Ruiz notebook to actually take notes in. All right, and I don't think I marked anything in the month of March, but basically I just went through and looked at all of the spell options for each day and took notes on which ones were of interest to me. And that's what I used that for. Now, the Miguel Ruiz notebook. I got this I don't want to say it was on an impulse because I was really trying not to impulse buy anything, but I was really curious about this notebook. I've seen it used as an alternate for the Hobonichi, for um, Fobonichi planner work. I really like that it has grid paper and that it is so thick. I think it has something like 300 pages um, or six hundred pages, three hundred sheets, however that works out. Um, but I was not convinced, and it, it's cheap, it's ten dollars at Barnes & Noble. I was not convinced about this binding. It's basically glued binding, which is, in my opinion, never a good thing. And all of the videos I've seen of this, um, the, the notebook looks like it's gonna fall apart before all the pages are used, so I don't know about that. That was part of the experiment. Things I like about it are basically, aside from the size and the grid, the paper. The paper is really smooth and it does work out really well with my fountain pens, so that is a plus. One additional small negative is when I bought this, it really, really stank. <laughs> I mean, it smelled awful. Uh, I'm assuming from the glue. Uh, and it was wrapped in plastic, and it was terrible, but, I mean, now it's it's okay, so... Alright, so that's the little mini review, and let's get into what I actually did. So, and unfortunately, I can't see this very well, but... I took the information for the month of March, just the general information from the almanac, and I copied it out here, kind of highlighting things that I thought were interesting or significant that I wanted to look at, things like signs of the season. I wanted to kind of journal about what the signs of the season are for me. Eggs, decorating eggs, magical symbols, agriculture, Pisces. So all of kind of the key words I highlighted in some way, shape, or form. And then on the next page, I did just a basic month layout. All the, the days I marked the full and new moons and uh, the dates. And then next to each one of these that had an interesting little historical tidbit or spell that I wanted to look into more from, from the almanac, everything I liked in here, I put it next to the corresponding day on my lineup. And then down at the bottom, I just had a couple of addi additional notes. Um, it was Women's History Month, the book I was working with, and another idea for a spell that I came um, that I had along the way. I have done kind of a poor man's tab here since I'm in April now. This is just um, tape, regular old tape, Scotch tape, and I did that just because I love tabs and I didn't have any. All right, from there, I did not necessarily go in this order. This was just a reference for me of things I wanted to work on during the month. The first thing that came to mind was actually lunar work. I, Although 
I have worked with the, the moon a lot. I have my ideas of what the different phases mean and what works with them. I've never actually taken the time to write out and draw out a lunar phase uh, pictorially. So I thought it would be fun to do. And as you can see, I did not complete it, but I figure that's okay. I completed what I felt like completing at the moment, and then I have it to go back to and complete later. I have a couple of notes in pencil, and it's all good. Now the reason the lunar phase came up for me was because I was doing a lot of work uh, that month. I was doing a lot of work in March on my house blessing, my house blessing and release, and that's been my major focus for spell work uh, recently. So I have all of my notes for the full moon, what I wanted to do for the full moon here, and additional just extra lunar notes that I came across along the way. Uh, more full, full moon notes. And here, this is actually my note about how it went. I performed the full moon uh, spell or, or mini ritual on the 11th and it actually went a little bit too well <laughs> and my um, my renter emailed me on the 13th to tell me she found a new place and would be moving out two weeks earlier than I wanted her to. So that was good for her, unfortunate for me, but the spell worked, put it that way. And here I did like a little mini calendex that was meant to be a study schedule, kind of a year and a day thing. And I have two texts that I want to work with for that, but I and you know I started writing notes here, but I didn't really do much of that. I did read a couple of the Eddas, but I didn't put any I didn't do any notes on them yet, so that kind of fizzled. But I have it here. I know I want to do it, so I and this space is reserved for those notes, so I'll come back to it. And then I have several pages that only have. Um, what do you call those titles? <laughs> because I was thinking about herbs and I was basically writing down which are the ones that I use the most and my intent was to come back and write more detail on that. So as you can see I haven't done that yet but it's there. And then here on this page, I was talking with a friend. She is currently converting to Judaism, and we had mentioned briefly the Star of David and its associations with the, the elements for folks on, in, on the pagan side of things. And so I drew it out, and I took notes here along the way of basically any and all information I could find on how this symbol is used or has been used in history because its use as a symbol of Judaism is actually extremely recent. So I took notes on some other uses. And then here I have notes on worry dolls. And I had seen these first. I had an old note of mine in my phone. I saw these at the Denver Art Museum, the traditional Guatemalan little small one-inch puppets. And I basically combined notes from what I knew of that, plus other ideas that I had been looking into, basically the idea of poppets. And there was one from the Almanac. It was a Japanese doll festival. And basically just kind of putting in the overall information about dolls, puppets, telling your worries to dolls and their use in kind of dispelling worries or sending information from you out to the universe. I think it's a really very interesting way of doing magic and I have some ideas for how I might like to use poppets but I also have some reservations as well which is why I haven't done it yet but more on that when I get to it. This was inspired by a spell from the Almanac. The spell was uh, Celebrating Life. And to me, I took that as an unbirthday spell. Basically, take the idea of your birthday, celebrating a birthday, but put it on any other day and do it in a group. 
and so I wrote down the spell from the almanac and then I'm going to go back and tweak it and make some changes on how I would like to do that. Then I was in Portland visiting my brother and came across this quote in the museum. It was the Oregon Historical Society, I believe. And the quote is, The earth was once a human being, made by the Creator to be the mother of all people. Her soil is flesh, the rocks are her bones, the wind is her breath, the trees and grass are her hair. And I just thought that was really beautiful, so I added it in. Nice big print. Then I have Ostera info. And I started writing out the ritual that I want to do from one of my books that I apparently have not completed in the past. I thought I did. So I started writing it out, didn't complete it, and then from here again I'm going to tweak it and change it, make it mine. And here I have information about the Ostera tree. This is a tradition that I love, it's something that my family has always done, and I kind of just wrote out the steps to creating an Ostera tree, and uh, hopefully we'll post that at some point for you guys as well. This was just a little reflection. Um, this is going to be a note on mahogany obsidian, which I love. Um, this is a magic tree spell that was, again, inspired by the almanac, but I want to do it differently. And when I get around to that, I will let you know. <laughs> and I'm going to turn, I'm going to combine this idea of a magic tree with the idea of a, a manifestation jar. And a spell for creativity I didn't finish either, but that's from the almanac. And I was rethinking my Wheel of the Year and wanting to flesh it out a little bit. Next page I'm going to skip because I'm going to show you that in a different video. And then I come on to April. So here's my next little poor man's tab. And I've done the same. The Instead of writing out the information for April, I just kind of did bullet points this time. And then took note of ideas in the almanac that I want to look at. And this month actually there was not as much that I was interested in from the almanac, which is partially good because that means I can go back and continue work on the stuff from March as well. But this gives me a little bit of a divider between themes, um, so I like that. And one other thing that I will point out is that whenever I did specifically look at something I got from the almanac and wrote it in here. I wrote the page number next to that date. So I have been numbering the pages and then marking where I will find each of those topics. So that is how I'm hoping to avoid everything getting lost in a giant notebook as it usually does when I just put stuff randomly in at home. So. I hope that was of interest to you, and I'll turn the camera back around and finish up with a little conclusion. Okay everyone, so that was the basic idea of what I'm doing with this, I guess this working witchy notebook. It's similar to what I was doing before with just compiling information into a notebook, but so far I really like having at least the specter of an outline in the form of that initial calendar and breaking up breaking it up into months to kind of organize things and well, organize things for reference and also make it more of almost like an ongoing practice instead of just eh, whenever I have an idea throw it in the notebook. I think I'm going to like that aspect of it I will let you know how it goes. Hopefully I will have additional updates on this later. Uh, until then, have a great day and a great week, and see you again soon. Bye.